Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I'm going to bring you 10 brand new high-end dupes. I love how each one of these came out. I definitely have some favorites, and I cannot wait to show you, so stay tuned. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. I upload a bunch of times a month, and if you love all things home decor, DIYs, home decorating, room makeovers, room refreshers, then you definitely want to stick with me by subscribing and turning on those notifications. All right, this is kind of a long one, so grab a drink, get cozy, and enjoy these high-end dupes. Our first dupe today comes from Pottery Barn, and I went to the Dollar Tree, picked up a white bowl, and this little white, I think it's called a souffle cup or something like that, and I'm just going to use some of uh, that super glue and hot glue to go ahead and hot glue or glue that little bowl um, to the bottom of the big bowl. Now, I'm going to be using three of those little bunnies that you get in the Paint Your Own Bunny kits. Now, these I actually used in a DIY a couple of years ago, so that's why there's like hot glue on it and it's already painted. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean them up a little bit. So I'm just using my heat gun to melt that glue so I can go ahead and scrape it all off. And I'm going to do that for all three. Okay, so now it's just a matter of trying to arrange how I want them to look. Now, in the piece from Pottery Barn, three bunnies were stacked, so it looked like they were trying to climb inside the bowl. Actually, it was two bunnies st stacked and then one, like, getting in the bowl or something like that. So you're going to see here. Now, I did only use hot glue. I use Gorilla hot glue sticks, and it seems to really those are those are my favorite they're linked down in the description box below i feel like those are the best hot glue sticks so i'm just gonna go ahead and kind of arrange my bunnies so they're stacked on top of each other but one's facing one way one's facing the other way the other one is kind of cockeyed so i'm kind of angling them and just positioning them and but i am keep making sure that i am putting the glue wherever it touches the bowls, if that makes sense. And I am being very generous with the hot glue because we will be covering over it anyways. So you're not really going to see it that much. So I'm just going to go ahead and just, you know, glue my bunnies together and just stack them. Now, I know that this is a weird angle to be showing this, but I didn't really know how else to do, <laughs> how else to do it. I don't really have a side view from my camera. Uh, so I apologize, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and work on stacking these up and gluing them to the bowl. Now, as you can see, this did take me a hot minute to try to figure out how to position all of these best so that it had the best hold and that I could glue it on the bowls. But once I did get it all figured out, I just went ahead and reinforced it with extra glue. And look how cute this is. It really does look like the bunnies are trying to help this top bunny get inside the bowl. And I thought that this is so cute. All right, so now we are going to take ivory chalk paint, or you can use white, you can use pink, whatever color you want. I'm just trying to stick with the dupe. And I'm going to paint this entire thing, both bowls and those bunnies in the ivory chalk paint. I did end up giving everything three coats. Now, of course, because I am painting these, this does not make it food safe. So I would just put like wrapped candies or eggs or carrots, fake carrots, <laughs> um, and just use this for display only. 
Once it was all dry, I went ahead and took my Waverly Antique Wax and just a little sponge brush, and I did use the same brush that I um, used to paint the ivory, and I am just going to distress this. Now, you do not have to do this part if you do not like the distressed look. In the original piece, it was distressed, so I'm just trying to stick with the dupe. And I, so I decided to go ahead and do that. Plus, I like that look anyways. If you've been following me for a while, you know that. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of just do light little strokes here and there. I'm just kind of doing them randomly. And then as you can see, I'm wiping it with my finger uh, just to go ahead and give it that distressed and rustic look. Now, although this piece didn't turn look exactly like the original Pottery Barn piece, I do think that it got pretty close. Now, one thing about all of these DIYs, of course, they're not going to look exactly like the original, or some of them may just even be inspired by. You're going to notice later on in the video, I make a wreath, and I don't use the colors that they use at all, because all of these pieces that I'm doing today, I want to make for my home. So of course I'm going to make them in the style and the colors that I like. So that is one great thing about DIYing your own things. You can customize them to your own tastes and what you like. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up here. And this is what it looks like when it's all complete. And I thought it was super, super, super cute. Here's the one from Pottery Barn. Now, the weird thing is, is I found it on the website, but there was no link or web page for it for a price. So I don't know if it's out of stock or what, but here is mine, and I think I got it pretty darn close. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead. Okay, so I'm going to show you some really quick and easy napkin rings that I found on the Kirkland's website. I'm going to show you three. We're going to start off with this pack of napkin rings from the Dollar Tree. And I had some orange jute rope at home already. So I am just going to simply take this rope and I am just going to wrap this entire thing. Now, it did kind of take a while. So put on a movie or your favorite song, jam out, and just wrap these bad boys. <laughs> So once it was covered, you can see there that I left a little opening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this twine carrot that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree. We've all seen them. And I didn't really like the top uh, raffia part. So I took this little thing of foliage and I'm just going to create my own greenery up top of the carrot. So I'm just cutting off little pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and take my little weeding tool here. Or you just need a knife or something to poke a hole at the top. It is styrofoam under there. And it just makes it easier because then you can just go ahead and just poke the uh, foliage down right in the top of the carrot. Now, of course, you do want to secure it with some hot glue, which is what I did. And I put three little pieces in there to make it look a little bit fuller. But I do love that a lot more than the little chibi raffia that it came with. Okay, so as you can see, the carrot and the twine that I used are different colors or shades of orange. So what I'm going to do is actually take some of that darker twine, and I'm going to wrap it around my carrot to bring in that darker orange, and I really loved how this came out. So as you can see, I just put some hot glue at the top, wrapped it all the way down, and I'm just securing it with hot glue at the bottom. Now I'm going to take my napkin ring, I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue in that opening, and then I'm going to push the carrot on there was no reason for that opening I just didn't know that I you know I cut off a really long piece so it was it was easier to wrap around and um, that's just how far it got me but the carrot ended up covering that opening anyways so then I'm just gonna go through and just kind of cut off all the little hairs you can use the lighter method and do it with fire but I don't like fire so I'm just gonna cut it all off and this is how this napkin ring came out 
For the second one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use actual natural uh, twine here. And then I'm going to take this little bunny head. I am going to snap the stick off. Now, it was um, kind of hard, so I used my wire cutters to go ahead and break that off. And then all I'm simply going to do is just hot glue my little head on top of the napkin ring. Now, I have like kind of like stray little strings here, so I'm just kind of cleaning it up. And then I'll go ahead and hot glue the, this on. So this is not going to be an exact dupe, but when I saw the picture on the website, I was like, oh, I know something that I have already in my stash that I can use to make it look like kind of close to that. But I thought that these were so adorable. Oh my gosh, I love those. I love that. So cute. All right, and for this last one, I'm going to use this piece right here, but if you don't have it, of course, you can use twine and some beads painted white, and then I'm going to use one of those little rabbits. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut this apart, and obviously, we're not going to need that leaf. Now, I'm going to use one of these napkin rings just to wrap around, just to gauge a size. So now, I'm going to go ahead and take off beads um, once I kind of figure out how big I need my circle and then I'm just going to tie the two ends together now I do go ahead and take, end up taking out one more and then like I said I'm just going to tie these two ends together now I'm going to take one of the bunnies and a, a piece of painters tape just to help it uh, stay put while I paint this with just one coat of Waverly chalk paint in ivory and then once that dries, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue this to the twine that is hanging off of this napkin ring now. Now, at first, I hot glued it kind of like to the back part of the bunny. But then when I looked at the picture again, it was actually glued to its ear. And you can see that the ear fits in perfectly in between those two beads. So I'm going to make sure to secure it, secure it with hot glue and cut off any excess twine. And that was it for this one. All of these were super, super easy. And I think I might make three more of the carrot ones for my dining room table this year. And you're gonna have to see how I decorate my house for Easter. So that's my little plug for my decorate with me. Hopefully coming up next week. All right, here are the Kirkland's napkin rings. The bunny ones are a pack of four for $18.74. The carrot ones, pack of four for $18.74. And the bunny ones, pack of four for $22.49. And here are mine. For this third dupe, this one also came from Kirkland's, and I'm going to start off with this two-pack of the stretched canvas. Now, this is a 12 by 12. I got this for, from Five Below for $5, and then I'm going to go ahead and use a calendar from a previous year. I am going to go ahead and go with this print right here, but I am showing you that you could also use, well, you could use anything you want, really. Um, you could even do just a generic spring one, or they also have this one as well, which I thought was super cute. So the first thing I'm going to do is after I get it all unpackaged, I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut the canvas part off of my wood frame by going on the outside of the staples and I am just going to work to pull this whole canvas off of the frame. Street on clouds instead of the concrete, I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way, nothing can ruin my date, no matter what. Now I am left with this beautiful wooden frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay it on top of the canvas and I'm going to trace around it because we're going to do a reverse canvas. So once I get that done, I am going to go ahead and cut it out. It does not have to be perfect because we're going to be gluing this on the back of the piece. So like I said, it, it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. In fact, I'm cutting a little um, shorter than what I even traced. So that way when I go to hot glue it, it lands right on the frame. And then I'm going to put that off to the side and now it's time to faux stain my wood frame here. So to do this, I'm just going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to dip it into some of that Waverly antique wax and I am just going to rub it all over my frame. I'm also making sure to faux stain the inside parts and around the edges as well. 
Now, you do not have to do this. You can paint it white. You can paint it pink. You can do anything you want. I was just trying to stick with the dupe. Plus, I really love the color of this Waverly Antique Wax. Once my frame is dry, I'm going to flip it over and starting at the bottom, I am going to hot glue my canvas down to the back of the frame. Now you want to make sure to pull it taut. Now one thing I should have done was instead of rotating it, I should have done the sides first and then I should have done the top. So I should have done the bottoms, both sides and the top. So just do as I say and not as I do. But you do want to make sure to pull it tight because as you can see here I got some wrinkles and I think it's because I didn't do it the way I said I should have. But that's okay, it still turns out super cute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my bunny picture. The only thing I didn't like was the hole at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my paper trimmer and I am just going to cut that off. And then it is still going to fit into my frame, so no worries there. In fact, we're gonna have to end up um, cut, uh, cutting some of it off. But first what I'm gonna do is decoupage it down. So I'm just gonna take some Mod Podge. I'm gonna start at the top and work down in sections and put my calendar piece down now you only need like kind of a thin layer because this paper is so thin now one of the th things about this calendar paper is that because it's so thin it does show wrinkles if that bothers you then take your time put it down i've never not had wrinkles i'm okay with it it might bug you but i don't know it is what it is i mean maybe you can get it to do it without the wrinkles but unfortunately for me i kept getting wrinkles but like i said it doesn't bother me and i still think it came out super super cute so i'm just working my way down and i am definitely making sure to pay attention to the corners and the edges i'm gonna push it down especially on the edges and then once that is completely dry and it has to be completely dry you're going to take a, uh, a very sharp knife and you're going to go ahead and cut the excess off. You can see I have my heat gun there because I was using it to dry the edges. And then I'm going to take my uh, Mod Podge and I'm going to go around the corners and the edges. Now, here is the Kirkland's one, $74.99. Holy moly. It is beautiful, but not for $75. <laughs> and here's mine. All right, this next dupe actually comes from West Elm, and this is one of my top three of this whole entire video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with some bottle brush trees. These were just from my Christmas stash, and I hate to use them, but I know I can pick more up at Christmas time. Now, yes, I accidentally left that tag on, but don't worry, as you see there, I did end up taking it off. But what I'm gonna do is just spray paint all of them with some orange spray paint. And these, this is how it looks. After they're done, do they look like something familiar? All right, so you probably know where this is going, but what I'm gonna do is cut off the base of my trees. Then I'm gonna take some foliage, and again, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the top of my carrots. This is how easy it was to make these carrots, and these bottle brush carrots are so popular. Now, Dollar Tree does have uh, bottle brush trees out right now in pastel colors for Easter. I cannot find them anywhere. I saw them once like a month ago. Didn't think I needed it for anything, so I didn't get any of them. Then, of course, I thought to do this dupe video and came across these on the West Elm website. And I'm like, dang, I could have used those now. So if you see them, pick them up. I'm definitely going to pick some more up. I think I'm going to make more of these but because these just came out so cute. And I did a couple different sizes. So as you can see, I'm kind of using the wire stem at the top um, to attach the foliage to. And I'm just using the hole that's already at the bottom of the stem. I'm making it a little bigger with that little tool there. Then I'm just slipping it down. And of course, I'm using hot glue to secure all of this foliage on there. These were so easy to make. And like I said, these definitely landed in my top three of this DIY video. So I'm just going to continue adding greenery until I feel like it's enough or that, you know, until I like it. And I am using two types of greenery here. 
I just want to take a second to welcome all of you to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashley, like I said, and I'm a wife and a mama of two. If you like all things home decor, room makeovers, DIYs, room refreshers, home decorating, then this is definitely the channel for you. So subscribe, stay tuned, and hey, if you love what you're seeing so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I truly appreciate it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this one off with a little twine bow. The original one did not have the twine bow, but I just felt like it needed it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with these little carrots. And again, I'm just using that wire that's sticking out to use as a base to glue the greenery to. And seriously, again, so simple. I did forget to mention, now the base that I took off of that first tree and the base that I'm going to take off of that other tree in the top right hand corner, I'm going to keep those near because I'm actually going to be using them in the next DIY and I love that I got to repurpose something. I'm then going to top off the smaller ones with a twine bow as well and that completed these three. Now for the green one that I spray painted orange, I did not think that I was going to use that one because I don't know, I just didn't like how it it, um, how it came out, you know, how the color came out. But I did end up going ahead and doing the exact same thing. I was like, eh, I might as well, you know, I wasted it. <laughs> I don't want it, or I don't want it to be a waste. I already painted it. So I love how this one came out too. I think this one is probably my favorite. It just looks so cool. Now I should have probably gone through and sprayed it again to kind of you know more thoroughly cover the green but hey that's okay this one came out super cute so just quickly I'm just going through uh, to show you that I added some greenery to this one as well and this was a little harder because there was no wire piece at the top so I'm literally just like shoving the greenery in there now for this I'm actually going to take and make a big bow so I'm just gonna take this ribbon from the Dollar Tree I'm gonna fold it like an awareness bow right there I'm gonna scrunch it in the middle and then tie it off with some twine now I am you um, leaving my tails a little long of the twine because that's what I'm gonna use to just go ahead and tie it to my carrot and oh my gosh, I love this. It is just so adorable. You're going to have to let me know down in the comments what you think about these bottle brush carrots. I love them. Now I did go ahead and fluff my bow and then cut the tails of the bow in an angle um, just to complete this. And this came out so adorable. I cannot freaking wait to decorate for spring. <laughs> All right, here are the ones from West Elm. They used a bunch of different colors. That's not really my thing. I like the traditional orange. So that's what I went with, and here's mine. All right, this next dupe actually came from Overstock, and I wanted to make these anyways, and then it came up like in my Pinterest, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what I was looking for. So I'm going to make two of these. So I'm going to start off with this sign from the Dollar Tree, and of course I have two, and we're going to go ahead and only use the bunnies. So I'm going to take them off of the sign. Now I'm going to take two small dowel rods, and I'm going to faux stain them using the Waverly Antique Wax and a a baby wipe and I'm gonna do this to both now I'm gonna go back to the bunnies and I am going to just add a little bit of ivory paint where I think I'm gonna put these in the in my house it's going to be up against a white surface or you know wall or background so I can't really paint these white so because then it would blend into the background so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of ivory just for a little pop of color and to add a little dimension so I'm just very lightly dry brushing the ivory on there but I am going a little darker around the edges because you can see that it kind of outlined it and then as you saw I did go ahead and pop off that bow and the little galvanized metal piece at the top keep those uh, handy though because we will be um, using those all 
Okay, now I'm gonna take my galvanized pieces and I'm just going to paint those in ivory chalk paint. Now, the only reason why I'm using ivory in all of these DIYs um, today is because I can't find my white chalk paint. I know that I have it, <laughs> but I, I don't know where it is. Anyways, now I'm gonna take those two bases um, from, the, the, from the trees that I just did and turn it into carrots. And I'm going to clean them up a little bit. And these are gonna be the bases for our rabbits. So I'm gonna sand them down and then I'm gonna actually take a screwdriver and there's already holes in the bases and I'm just gonna take that screwdriver to make them a little bigger. And I just keep kind of testing it with the dowel rods. So you can see I'm just, you know, making, you know, I'm just working to make it bigger. I'm cleaning it out. And then once I do get the hole big enough that I can slide my dowel rod in into it I'm going to add some hot glue on the inside of the hole put my stick in and then add some hot glue around it and I'm gonna hold it there until the glue sets up so it doesn't fall over now don't worry the top of this is gonna be covered so load up on that hot glue you want to make sure that these sticks are secure in that hole Next, I'm going to take some brown paint. Um, I think this is chocolate bar or chocolate from Apple Barrel, but any, honestly, any dark brown paint will do. And I am just going to paint my bases. Now, I only did one coat on the top of the base, and I did about three coats on the side, and that's only because I had to cover the orange, and it still didn't get completely covered, but that's okay. I like how it came out. Now, here's why you don't have to worry about the top of the base because we're gonna take some Spanish moss and we're going to cover it. Uh, now I did wanna paint it brown anyways to make it blend in so orange wasn't peeking through, but this is why it didn't have to be completely covered. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my Spanish moss and cover both of my bases. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to give my bases a haircut. Basically, I'm just cutting around um, the top of the base. Um, that way, you can still see the side. Now, you can cover the, the whole base if you want, including the sides, but I opted not to do that. All right, now it's time to put our bunnies back together. So I'm going to glue those galvanized pieces on and the bows. And then we're going to put our little decor pieces together. So now I'm going to take one of the bases with the sticks and I am just simply going to hot glue my little bunny down right at the top of the dowel rod, right in the middle of his little belly. I am going to flip it over and I'm going to add some hot glue on either side of the stick and hold it down until it sets up. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. Now to give it even more of a hold, I'm going to go ahead and add some duct tape. Now you might be thinking, oh my God, there's blue duct tape on the back. These are not going to be seen. The back is not going to be seen, but you can paint or cover them. It's totally up to you. So here is the overstock one, one for $49.67. And here's my version. All right, this Pottery Barn dupe is so easy. First, you're gonna pick up a glass plate. I got one from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna start off by getting the dreaded sticker off. Oh, you guys know how I hate fighting with these. And then you're gonna pick up any set of napkins that you love. I had these from last year that I never actually used. So I'm just gonna cut off one of the little panels. Now this was three ply, I didn't realize it, I thought it was only two ply, but you do wanna go ahead and get it down to one ply. Next, you're going to take some Mod Podge and apply it. Now this plate is flipped over, I know it's kinda hard to tell. And then, so you're gonna apply it to the bottom of the plate and then you're going to take your napkin and put it upside down and push it down. You wanna make sure that it's completely dry and then when it is, you're gonna take your sanding block and you're going to sand in the downward direction. Now this is when I realized that there was, it, this was three ply because look, a whole layer is about to come off. <laughs> so um, definitely make sure that you get it to the thinnest you know, that it's supposed to be. 
Now, once it's all sanded down, you're going to take your Mod Podge again and you're going to Mod Podge over the top of this. Now, you want to make sure to pay attention to the edges as well because you don't, of course, want this to flop up. Now, I went through the baby wipe and I just wiped up with any Mod Podge that got on the rest of the glass plate that's not where the napkin is, if that makes sense. But I don't think you have to do that. Next, after this napkin is completely dry, I am going to take my ivory chalk paint and I'm going to give this two coats and I am going to paint the entire bottom of the plate. Now, I liked how this was looking so far, but I felt like it needed something else. So I'm going to take my ballet slipper and I'm going to go around the perimeter of the plate. And I thought that this added such a cute little dainty detail in the Pottery Barn one. They actually did green, but I thought pink would look a little better. So that's what I ended up doing. And using a small brush, the width of the, ac the actual like perimeter really helped too. This is sped up big time, but I I went super slow and did about three coats. All right, here is the Pottery Barn version. Super, super cute, and Peter Rabbit is so popular this year, but $69.50 for eight, whoo, that's a lot, but let me know what you think of my dupe. All right, this next one is a Kirkland's dupe. This is not gonna look exactly like what they have, but hey, I tried my best. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and um, start off with this piece that I actually picked up like on major sale from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just gonna give it two coats of ivory chalk paint. Next, I'm gonna take this jumbo craft stick. I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm also going to paint each one of these halves with the ivory chalk paint as well. Next, I'm gonna take my ballet slipper paint and using the tippy top of this foam brush I am just going to add some pink in the middle of each one of these little ears you could probably tell what we're making but I thought that this was like the perfect width it was just it was I don't know I just thought that this looked really cute uh, this little detail all right then I'm going to take my bigger piece and with the corner of the foam brush I'm going to make two little cheeks now these don't have to look perfect. In fact, on the um, Kirkland's one, it kind of just looks like it's handmade, homemade, stuff like that. All right, now I use these ugly pieces. I'm not even gonna talk about it because I ended up changing it, but I had to show it because I like finished the whole thing and then take it apart. But what I also ended up doing was using a Scrabble block, but you can use any kind of little piece of wood for the nose. So once I got my whiskers down, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue my Scrabble piece in the middle. Now you're probably, to me it looked like a spider uh, on, a, on a rabbit's face. <laughs> so that's why I'm gonna change these little black pieces um, in a minute. But like I said, I have to show you the whole process. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this Scrabble piece down and then I'm going to paint that with my ivory chalk paint. Now, should I have painted it before I glued it down? Yes, but I just thought, It'd be easier because, you know, it'd be easier to manage. But anyway, whatever. So just go ahead and um, paint the Scrabble piece ivory. Then I'm going to take that pink paint and I'm just going to put a little pink on the nose too. So for the eyes, I have these little um, pop-up stickers. I'm going to paint two of them with just regular black paint. Then I'm going to hot glue them down onto my little bunny head. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and hot glue the ears on. Now, the first time I did this, I actually hot glued them on a little lower than what I wanted, and then I just dropped the whole head on the on all of it. I don't know, this, this project was a hot mess. But anyways, the ears you wanna do a little wonky as well because that's how it was in the Kirkland piece. So now I'm gonna take a really small brush and some black paint, and I'm gonna make his little mouth um, at the bottom there. 
and um, I'm just taking my time and just drawing it out. You could do this, you know, with a vinyl or something like that. But like I said, the original piece looked like it was handmade. So now I'm going to go ahead and take another foam brush. And by using the tip of it, I'm going to dip it in some Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just going to go around the side um, of my bunny head to make it look more uh, rustic. Now, I went ahead and took the spider off of the face, and now I'm going to go ahead and use this black wire instead. This is all I could find in my stash. So I'm going to go ahead, I cut it off that little sign, and now I'm going to cut it in half, and look how much better that looks already. Oh my gosh, so much better. So, and I liked these too because then you can like twist them and turn them and twirl them and manipulate them to how you want it to look. So I took some pliers and I curled the ends because that's what it had on the original piece anyways. So I'm just gonna do that for both, and then I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing. I'm just going to hot glue them down, hot glue my nose back on, and you see that my ears are actually off too because I, um, I wanted to reposition those as well. So this one I kinda did twice, but that's okay. The end product, I really loved the end product and that's what matters. So here you go, here are my New Year's. I had to go ahead and paint new ones. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and hot glue um, these on. But what I did this time was mark where I wanted to hot glue them because the first time I had it positioned perfectly, but then when I lifted it up, I lost my positioning, blah, blah, blah. So now, you know, I learned from my mistake. So, and I like to show you this stuff too. That way you know what not to do. <laughs> Uh, so there we go. So now the ears are on. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over those ears with a Waverly Antique Wax, just like I did with the head. And I did go around and go a little heavier um, this time because I wanted it to look a little bit more distressed like the original piece. And I really do think that this part brought it to life. And I really loved how the end product looked. On clouds instead of the concrete, I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at blues. No, I don't care because I am on my way. Okay, so here's the Kirkland's one, 2624. Again, doesn't look exactly like it, but that's okay. I think mine's pretty cute. Okay, this next one is so quick and easy. All right, so I took this cloth from the Dollar Tree. This is one of those car, um, I think it's like a car rag or something. I don't know what it is, but it's in the car section and it is so soft and fluffy, which is why I liked it. So we're gonna take, we're gonna make a pillow. So I'm gonna hot glue two of the sides down. Now one, I folded this in half, so I am only gonna go ahead and hot glue two of the sides down for now. And as you can see, I'm working in sections. Next, I'm going to take this bunny garland that I got from the Dollar Tree last year, and I'm going to use these three colors. I do wish that I had the purple, but I must have used it on something else. But I'm going to lay them out, and then once I have them positioned how I like, I'm going to go ahead and just use some simple hot glue to hot glue all three of these down. Now, when I say this one was so quick, before I edited this, the footage of this pillow was eight minutes long. So this was a very easy and quick, quick project to do. So once I had all of my felt bunnies glued on, I'm just going to take some stuffing that I got out of a very old pillow, and I am just going to start stuffing my new pillow here. And oh my gosh, I just love this. I cannot wait to display it. I think it's going to be super cute. Okay, so once it's all stuffed, I'm just going to simply go ahead and hot glue that last uh, side down again, working in sections. And then after that's done, I'm kind of going to beat my pillow. <laughs> um, I'm just going to kind of smush it, move it around and stuff so all of the stuffing is kind of e evenly um, inside the pillow, if, that, if, if you understand what I mean. Like, it's 
you know, all the little corners are covered. Now, the original piece did have a border around it, but, um, or like a trim around it, but I didn't really have a good trim, but I'm going to show you here what you could use. I just didn't have the right color. I just didn't think it would look right, but this would be super cute around it. So that could be an option for you. But here is the one from Kirkland's 4049 for that pillow. Holy moly. But I thought mine got came pretty close. All right, here is a really fun one. So this one is more an inspired piece. This, I didn't use their colors at all, but the same concept. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this bunny head. As you can see, one of my ears did break off, but that's okay, we're gonna go ahead and fix that. But first, we need to completely deconstruct this entire bunny head. We need to take all this tinsel off. Not only that, but we need to um, cut all of the little, there's like little, um, things around the frame here so you want to cut all of those off you need to snip them all off and you need to snip the middle off of the head and the ears so you're going to see in a minute we just want to be left with this simple frame now they i thought that they sold um a wreath form of a bunny head um at the dollar tree i've never seen it at mine i think pretty sure they do though so if you see that maybe pick that up it might be easier but this was pretty pretty easy it didn't really take that long and it wasn't that hard to do so as you can see i'm literally just cutting everything i just want the base of the head and the ears so now i'm going to go ahead and go around and just clean this up a little bit i want those little tabs gone and then i'm going to go ahead and hot glue my poor little ear back <laughs> it just got broken transit i guess so now what i'm going to do is I'm going to take this really thick wire that I had in my stash. This part's optional. I just did this because this is what the original piece had. But I am going to wrap this around just the head part. Now, I'm not going to tightly wrap it. It's just going to be, you can see there's spacing in between. So this took like seconds to do. It's very, very easy. So I'm going to go around the head you do not have to do the top of the head that's all going to be covered then i'm going to snip and um, bend it back now my ear was still kind of flimsy so i did just go ahead and secure it a little bit more with that popsicle stick and don't worry it's all going to be covered so now i'm just going to go through and clean up these little tabs here and then i'm going to take my sanding block and i'm just going to kind of lightly sand down this entire piece because it was kind of some of those little tabs left sharp edges so i'm just going to go ahead and clean it up then i spray painted it with white spray paint now, this is where the fun begins and you can really get creative. This is going to be a wreath. So I just went through my stash and basically picked out any kind of stems, um, greenery, and these were all just like leftover picks that I had and just, you know, things, you know, just leftovers. So I'm just going to go through and build up this entire wreath at the top where the ears are. So I kind of sped this up for you though because I didn't think it was necessary for you to see every single thing. But I will mention some um, highlights. So basically I started with the greenery first and I'm, I kind of do the mirror method. I just, whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. And then I added some lamb's ear which I thought was super, super cute. And then I'm going to just go in with some other flowers. You're going to see some big pink flowers coming in. But basically, you just want to build this part up, and you can use whatever colors you want, flowers, greenery, whatever, whatever you like. Now, I did add a big peach flower in the middle because the original had a big flower in the middle. And I'm just adding more things. Now, in the original, they had like little wires sticking out. But I had these in my stash. And I thought that these would be cute. Now, I'm going for that pastel look. Um, the original is gold, which you'll see. Uh, and the original also had um, eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these foam eggs in there. But to help me secure them, I did just cut down... Um, a skewer you could use toothpicks and this just helps to uh, glue them in so now I'm just gonna go through and just kind of add different stems and pieces and just really build up my wreath
Okay, so there was like a big gem in the middle of the flower of the original, so I just went ahead and added one too. And then I did hot glue the petals back a little bit so you could see the gem. Now for my hanger, I'm just going to flip it over. I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to tie a knot at the bottom. And then that's what I'm going to use to hot glue down. And then I'm just going to cut those extra pieces off. And that's it. I absolutely love this. This is in my top three for sure. This came out so, so adorable. Again, this is not going to look like the original, but it was definitely inspired by. You can kind of see where I was going with it. So I thought that this came out so cute and totally fit my style. Okay, now it's time for the last dupe from Kirkland's and of the video. If you're still with me, you are the real MVP, my friend. All right, so I have this Chunky Bunny that I got for $5 at Target last year, but I'm pretty sure they have them this year. I am going to go ahead and section off right kind of above the tail uh, with some painter's tape. Now I'm going to take a foam brush. I'm going to paint my... The, just the top of the bunny with um, the Waverly Antique Wax, and then I'm going to wipe it down with a baby wipe. And this is going to faux stain the bunny. And then I'm going to do the same to the top and the edges as well, but I'm gonna stop at the painter's tape. After that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape, and then I'm going to put the tape at the top of the, or I should say the bottom of where the stain is. You can see where the stain meets the natural wood. Then I'm going to paint the bottom of my bunny with ballet slipper paint. Now, you can use any color you want. I'm really big into like the book blush or pastel pinks for spring and Easter so that's what I'm going to do once that is completely dry I am going to remove the tape and then I'm going to hot glue this little cotton ball to the little tail part next I'm going to take a kind of smaller popsicle stick I'm going to cut off a little rectangle and now I'm going to sand it so this the corners are rounded a little bit they're not super super round but I just rounded them off a little bit and then I'm going to paint this with my Waverly Talk Paint in Ivory. Now I lost the footage here, but I did go ahead and poke a hole in that little piece with my Cropodile. And now I'm just going to take a black uh, Sharpie and just write the word hop. Now on the original it said hoppity, but I'm not really into hoppity, so I just stuck with hop. Then I'm going to take my um, sand block and I'm going to sand down the edges and kind of on the word too so it's not so bold and black. Now I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to first put it, put my tag on there. Then I'm going to wrap it around the back and to the side so when I tie this bow it's kind of like under his neck and the tag is off to the side. Now I'm going to just kind of tack that down with some hot glue, the tag, so it stays in place. And I did kind of leave my tails a little longer, but that's it to this side, and it was so quick and easy. Here is the Kirkland's one. Not bad, 1124. That, you know, that's not bad. But I really love how mine came out, and it fits into the style of my home, too. Oh my goodness, what did you think about all of those dupes? I absolutely love how each one of them came out and I cannot wait to use them this year to decorate around my house for spring and Easter. Don't forget to catch my decorate with me, hopefully coming up next week or within the next few weeks. I have not decorated my house for spring since 2019, so I am chomping at the bit. So definitely turn on those notifications and subscribe. And don't forget if you loved what you saw today, hit that like button because it really helps my channel to grow. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you got a lot of inspiration and ideas on some fun DIYs that you can make for this spring and Easter season. Also, don't forget to leave me a comment down below letting me know which one was your favorite. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!